On this week's show, Jeff Johnston and his wife Pam take out a new Lance Camper 1475 trailer for an extended review. And the results, well, you'll see in this story. Also, what happens when your refrigerator lets go? Evan Schmarter shows us how she handled the problem with just a phone call. Then, Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 show us 10 items you should have to assure reliable campground connections. These stories and more on this week's Rolling on TV. Rolling on TV is brought to you by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. When it comes to selecting a lightweight trailer today, you have a huge variety of choices. Sizes, options, accessories, high-tech gadgets, prices, there's something for almost everyone out there. Lance Camper Company, of course, has been famous for building truck campers for decades. It jumped into the lightweight market some years ago, making a big splash and for good reason. The 1475, this little guy here, is the latest reason why Lance is getting a lot of attention. Let's hear a bit about this new model from Gary Christians, a Lance sales guy at Guarantee RV in Junction City, Oregon. They've got a very short travel trailer that weighs under 3,000 pounds with a nice full-size bed and two freestanding chairs with a nice table in between. It's a nice open floor plan and a very small lightweight trailer. You'll be excited to see it. We agree, Gary, it's an exciting new product. The 1475 is the smallest trailer in the Lance lineup. Now this one weighs about 3,400 pounds, more or less empty. We had propane tank up front full, battery on the hitch, and no water in the fresh holding or gray tanks. So call it kind of a, you know, empty, not quite wet weight. But that's a good starting point. If you've got a vehicle that can tow 5,000 pounds, you can load this down, load down your vehicle, and you'll still be in pretty good shape. This little trailer, uh, this particular 1475, is designed for two people. It's got a very interesting floor plan with features that we haven't seen in a small trailer like this before. We'll get into those in just a minute. But for the moment, we'll show you a few of the other really cool things that they have out here. Starting, for example, with this cool carefree awning. We really like the fact that when it extends, there are no arms hanging down the sides, nothing to bang our heads on. That's really a kind of a convenient feature. Let's take a look at a few of the other things that make this Lance a real standout. You're gonna to need to go to the Lance website to get a real feel for all the features on this product. There's a list as long as your arm. But a few were worth pointing out here, for example. The whole body is framed with aluminum, polystyrene insulation, very strong assembly. You've got a, this plastic Euro-style window up front that opens for ventilation, privacy screen that comes up one way, bug screen that comes down the other, very versatile. Down on the front here, you've got the uh, uh, metal protective tread material to protect from rocks and so on. And the whole roof is this fiberglass sheet that starts here wraps all the way up over the top and to the back, which eliminates a lot of seams and that eliminates a lot of potential for leaks. The side walls are uh, laminated with Asdell composite and fiberglass and it eliminates the wood and that of course uh, reduces the potential for uh, leak related problems, rot, delamination and so on. It's really altogether a very well put together piece. The hitch area is pretty sensibly put together got a great space back here for the battery and it's bolted down so you can modify the, the rack very easily to accommodate two batteries which is always a handy thing of course if you're going to be dry camping a lot. You can put a taller larger capacity LP tank on here that's kind of nice and this has a new feature called the smart jack. Uh, it's a power jack like a lot of them but by by way of programming it you can program it so that it it remembers what height it should be, where it should be, in order to back your hitch ball under it. So right now we've got it dropped down quite a ways, of course, so when we leveled the trailer for the campsite. But when we're ready to leave, you jack up the this corner stabilizing jacks, recall the memory on the hitch, and it automatically goes right back up to where it's supposed to be. And that's sort of a fun feature. 
But this little trailer only has one storage compartment accessible from the outside, but there's a big door like this on each side. It goes all the way through. It's huge. And it has the handy magnetic catch, which we really like. And there's an item that Lance throws in here that's a super handy storage option. You uh, release the latch here, and this guy, uh, well, essentially it runs all the way the width of the trailer, so you can keep whatever you need to keep inside this handy storage area and get to it without having to reach all the way inside back in there, sending one of your kids in to retrieve something that fell all the way back. You buy an RV that has cranked down corner stabilizing jacks, probably get one of these guys, something like this. And you, of course, plug it into the jack, crank it, crank it, crank it, crank it, and crank it, and the jack runs down. And that works. But there's a much easier way to do it. For example, you buy an extra one of these, or you take the one that you have, cut it off right about here someplace, maybe grind a couple of flat spots on the shaft, chuck it into your portable drill, and that really takes a lot of the work out of setting up in camp. And that's your tech tip for the day. We found something really interesting here in this forward storage compartment on the Lance. Now, thinking back over about 30 some odd years of doing this kind of a project, I think, I could be wrong, but I think this is the first time that I've seen one of these. Lance includes an honest to God lug nut wrench. It's a socket, three quarter inch, with a handle that slides out so you can get a lot of leverage on it. This is one of the most sensible, um, responsible pieces of equipment that I've ever seen in an RV. Lance, thank you for this. We need that because this trailer has uh, cast aluminum rims and that means you got to get in there and check those on a regular basis. It's a great safety item. Back here on the street side of the RV we found this interesting little compartment door. Just about head height, well for a lot of people. When you open it up, what you see on the inside is the back side of the shower stall and the plumbing connections for the hot and cold water are right here. Now admittedly, this may not be the kind of thing that you're going to be accessing every day or even every year, but when you got to change the plumbing in there, this is a whole lot easier and more sensible than having to tear the whole compartment out. In the ongoing battle for market share, Lance does it the easy way. Assemble a good quality product loaded with smart ideas and the customers will respond. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with more about the Lance 1475 trailer right after these commercial messages. Simply put, Thetford's AquaCam has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaCam, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaCam, another great product from Thetford. We didn't make the majestic mountains, or the rugged terrain, or paint the night sky, but we make it possible to see it all. Road Trek, America's number one selling touring coach for over 25 years. Built with quality so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the destinations you want. Enjoy the peace of mind that only a Road Trek can provide. Welcome back to Rolling On TV and our look at the new extra compact Lance 1475 trailer. It tows like a dream with no destination stress, and once in camp, you're set for the duration. Our campsite was one of the smallest RV sites at Belknap Hot Springs, but the Lance fit the space just fine. The exterior is a fine fitting wrapper for what's inside the trailer and the details inside promise an interesting living space. Now, every one of these compact trailers does its best at packing a lot of features into a small space. And along with those features come some pretty neat items sometimes. And Lance, well, they've got their own share of pretty neat items. We've already looked at a few of them on the outside, but there's one back here we want to talk about a little bit. 
down here is a cabinet door directly below the refrigerator. When you open that door, what you are looking at is directly at the back of the water heater. You can see the valve that allows you to set it for winterizing bypass or regular use. The plumbing, all the connections are right there in the open where they're easy to access. This is a really cool feature and for example if you want to replace your water heater with a Truma AquaGo, you can get access to all the plumbing and connections. It's an easy project to swap it out. And if you need service or need to repair a leak or whatever, you got it right there. That's a heck of a lot easier than having to disassemble a complete cabinet in order to get to the water heater, which happens in a lot of vehicles. Now over here on the kitchen side, it's a terrific kitchen layout. You've got the regular countertop here, the extra countertop on this side, which, which is uh, the top of just a storage cabinet. Really nice deep sink. This seems to be something that um, it's as if all of a sudden an RV designer woke up one morning and said, hey, I'm going to go out and try an RV. Went out in the RV and said, you know what? The sink is a little bit small in this guy. Let's see if we can find something better. Now, an awful lot of companies are using these sinks, which are large, deep, and provide enough space that you can actually work in them. Everybody who comes into this trailer who has seen other vehicles we've had with the similar sink comments on that how nice it is, especially the ladies who spend probably the most time in the kitchen. For the rest of the kitchen here, you have your stainless steel Atwood three burner stove with an oven feature, microwave oven up above, uh, all kinds of storage space where it's handy. And down here, you have some plastic slide out drawers. These are the kind of drawers that are really practical for kitchen use, but a lot of companies don't include them. They just give you holes and you have to throw your stuff in there. These drawers are extra valuable for kitchen utensils and such. And the uh, large LCD television, of course, is right here against the wall with a mount that you can swivel out and aim it at the bed, aim it at your seating area, and so on. Directly above that water heater plumbing access door, nice size Norcold two-door refrigerator, and a handy closet or uh, pantry type shelf. Back here in the corner, got to kind of line up the door with the privileged seat here in order to get it open. You have a very nice dry bath, big enough for this type of vehicle certainly, and big enough for your average full-size adults like me. Of course, typical toilet, corner-mounted shower with a curtain, and a sink that is, you know, large enough to get your hands under there to wash or do whatever else you need to do in here, plus storage uh, above and below the sink. Very traditional bathroom setup. And I might add, the door works like a champ. Not very many RVs can say that. The swivel chairs are large enough to comfortably accommodate full-size adults. They flank a movable table here. Not really large, but it's big enough for eating your average meal that you might have in a smaller trailer like this. And, ah... Not a bad place to sit down and just hang around when you want to. Now the back chair is fixed on its mount. The front chair, you can slide around to reposition as you want it, which is a good idea because the back of the chair can contact the wall or the, the valance or some such if you're not too careful. Up here at the front of the trailer, you have, as we mentioned, an RV queen size bed couple little reading lights up here by the head of the bed, so you probably put your head on this side, on this end. A great little storage shelf here, a restraining net so you can pack soft goods up here, for example. This uh, privacy screen moves over to cover the bed, although it's a two-people vehicle, so why you would need a privacy screen, I'm not sure, but you know, some people like that sort of thing. They like their sleeping area kind of closed in. All things considered, this is a pretty comfortable interior. It's small. I mean, it's a 14 foot plus a little bit trailer. You're not going to get a whole lot of elbow room and space in here, especially without a slide out room. But it lacks that complexity of a slide out room. It's kind of a simple product. And with these two chairs, we found it in the evening, a really nice place to be able to sit down and relax, read and that sort of thing. 
Uh, the Lance 1475, it's a very different kind of, uh, of small trailer, very different kind of interior, but this is liable to appeal to uh, just that certain crowd of people. Check it out. For more about the Lance 1475, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Exploration. It affirms that we are alive, demands that we are present. So let's put our work lives on pause, ramble out into the world, and share the journey with the ones we love. For more information, visit LanceCamper.com. Well, the inevitable finally happened. I came home from the grocery store, of course, and was greeted with a strong ammonia smell coming from my fridge. I went outside to look at the back of it and found a dripping green liquid. Back inside, I immediately turned the appliance off and called my pal Jim Hargrove, San Diego's mobile RV expert. Jim was here in a flash to remove the fridge and advise me on options. Since I'd had such a great experience with my Norcold, I set out to find a replacement unit that would have a similar look and feel as well as fit in the former fridge's space. It turns out that Norcold has a new generation of my model, an N841, that was ideal. We ordered it, and in no time it was ready to be picked up. Out of the truck and unboxed, my husband and my RV expert easily manhandled the fridge up the steps and into place. Heave-ho into the hole, and a gentle push is all it took to get it where it needed to be. Jim zipped the screws in, secured it in place, added the trim, and headed out to connect the power and the propane. Inside, on it went, and it immediately began cooling. Now I mentioned how much I loved my old fridge. Just like my previous unit, the new one has a roomy inside, adjustable shelves and door pockets, a two drawer crisper, and a sleek, simple control panel. But from the outside, I've always loved the gorgeous wood panels that made it look so elegant. This model doesn't come with standard panels. You can get those separately. But fortunately for me, my old ones fit like a glove. I slid them in and added the new magnetized panels, great for lists, photos, those cool magnetized words that you can make poems with, and bam, I was in business. This model allows you to have the hinges on either side, though they come standard on the right. Our rig configuration allows enough space for either, but if that's not your case, your RV expert can swap sides in about 60 minutes. In less than 24 hours, my fridge was cold enough to transfer my things into it, and it's been performing like a real champ ever since. The coldest place in the unit, perfect for ice cream or ice cubes, continues to be the bottom left of the separate freezer compartment. Hey, life happens. Thank goodness Norcold, a Made in America product, came to my rescue. I'm looking forward to another dozen plus years of faithful Norcold service from my favorite RV refrigerator. Coming up after the break, we learn what 10 items you should have for reliable campground connections. We'll be right back. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, Visit us online at jaco.com or just log on to rollingontv.com. When you have a Truma AquaGo instant hot water system, you can expect to make a lot of new friends.
Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. When you take an RV trip, it's a good idea to be prepared for the unexpected. This is especially true when you arrive at the campground you're staying at. I could probably list 20 items that are helpful in making campground connections, but there are 10 items that will help ensure successful connections at the campground every time. Let's see what made my list. Number 10, coax cable. The majority of campgrounds you stay at will offer access to some type of cable television. I keep a 50-foot roll of coax cable in the RV and have always had enough cable to make the connection from the RV to the campground cable connector. Number 9, disposable gloves. I keep a supply of inexpensive disposable gloves on hand in the RV. They work great for all of your RV holding tank and wastewater management chores and other routine maintenance on the RV. Number eight, water regulator. You never know what the water pressure will be at a campground. A water regulator helps protect your RV plumbing system from high water pressure that is common at many campgrounds. Always connect the regulator at the source of the water to regulate the pressure before it enters the drinking hose or the RV. Number seven, RV extension cord. Sometimes the RV power cord is not long enough to reach the campground electrical connection. When this happens, you need an extension cord that is compatible with the electrical system on your RV. Regular household extension cords are not rated for use with RVs. Number six, stackable leveling blocks. Some campgrounds are fairly level and some aren't. It's a good idea to keep some stackable leveling blocks on hand in the RV. When you position the RV on the site, you can use the stackable leveling blocks to level the RV and if it's a towable RV, the blocks can be used under the tongue jack, stabilizer jacks, or fifth wheel landing legs. Leveling blocks not only assist in leveling the RV, they provide solid footing when the ground is sandy, loose, or wet. Number five, water filtration. I highly recommend some type of water filtration system. There are several types of water filters available designed specifically for use with RVs. You can install an under-the-counter filter directly to a faucet you drink from, or you can use an external filtration system designed to filter all of the water going into the RV. Number four, electrical adapters. When you travel in your RV, you never know what type of electrical service will be available, and the day will come when you need an RV adapter cord to make the electrical connection at the campground. I recommend keeping several electrical adapters on hand in the RV at all times. Number three, RV drinking water hoses and regular garden hose. I recommend keeping an assortment of potable RV drinking water hoses in the RV. I keep a 25 foot and a 50 foot drinking water hose in the RV at all times so I can always reach the campground water supply. I take an ordinary garden hose for cleaning the RV and for rinsing and flushing the holding tanks. The garden hose should be green, black, or gray in color. RV drinking water hoses are normally white or blue, so the colors will help you distinguish between the two types of hoses. Number two, RV sewer hoses and adapters. I keep a 10 foot and 20 foot drain hose in the RV at all times. You never know how far you will be away from the campground sewer drain. I also recommend using heavy duty RV sewer drain hoses. They do not cost much more than a standard sewer hose and they will last much longer. RV sewer drain outlets not only come in different sizes, but some are smooth pipe while others are threaded pipe. This is why I recommend an assortment of adapters to make the connection at the campground sewer or dump station drain outlet. I keep a universal RV sewer adapter on hand that fits most smooth and threaded pipe drain outlets at the campground. Number one, surge protector for the RV. I highly recommend using some type of surge protector that will protect the RV's electrical system from possible damage. I personally use surge guard products on my RV. The surge guard I use protects the RV from faulty wiring at the campground like an open neutral, open ground, and reverse polarity. It also protects against voltage sags, surges, and spikes. The bottom line is your RV is equipped with some highly sophisticated electronics and expensive appliances that need to be protected against all of these potential threats. I mentioned earlier that there are lots of helpful products when it comes to making connections at the campground, but these are my top 10 products for consistently reliable campground connections. Happy camping. 
We hope you enjoyed this week's program. And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos and stories from current and past shows, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. As usual, this has been another fun production. <laughs>